welcome to Dead Man Talking. And as ever, please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. It really does help with the channel and our community further. And why not hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. And so, with that aside, let's get into tonight's story and title. That's not my dog. Let's get straight into that. On this particular weekend, my parents flew out to a funeral of a family member. And in hindsight, I probably should have come with them, but someone needed to watch the dog. Now, Leah is a very hyperactive husky that doesn't really function well without any of us present. We couldn't bring her with us, so I had to stay behind. And we live in the middle of nowhere, on a secluded road that leads into the woods. The next nearest house is roughly a mile away, which means Leah gets to stay outside for long periods of time. That dog absolutely loves running around the forest. I've had to go out there and bring her back on numerous occasions, simply because she loses track of time and won't return on her own. And don't get me started on the dead animals she brings back. I wish she wouldn't. It was a Saturday afternoon when I decided to go for a walk with Leah by my side. I often took walks through the forest to clear my mind. Not being able to attend the funeral was getting to me mentally. I called out to her inside of the house and she was by my side not even ten seconds later, panting and ready to go out. As soon as I opened the door, she bolted out at full speed, which made me grin. <laughs> I love that dog to death. There's a hiking trail through the forest that I usually walk not to get lost and Leah also knows to stay on track. And even if she doesn't, one quick call and she's usually by my side within a minute again. I was just observing Leah, watching her run back and forth and roll around in the leaves occasionally. And she was getting really dirty and I knew I'd have to hose her down before I let her back into the house. And the forest felt strangely eerie today. I was feeling uneasy and I couldn't really pinpoint why. I chalked it up to just me feeling upset because of the funeral, but my stomach would not stop churning. And Leah was really loud today, louder than usual. I could hear the leaves crunching even when she was completely out of sight, much further ahead than I was. Leah! I called out to her, and it echoed through the woods. I stopped to listen more closely. I could hear leaves crunching up ahead, and it was getting closer. Then I saw her emerge from behind a tree. The first thing I noticed that she was no longer dirty. Then I noticed that she was dripping wet. I sighed. I had forgotten that we were near the river. I was too distracted. I'd usually turn back before we reached the river. And she ran up to me. Oh, Leah, now I need to give her a bath. And she started shaking the water out and onto me, and then ran back off into the direction of the river. Leah, come back! I called out again, but she was still running. Oh, this wasn't like her. And I stood there, completely and utterly confused. And my bad gut feeling was only growing stronger. That's when I noticed something odd. The forest was eerily silent today. There were no birds chirping, no leaves rustling. Dead silence. I hadn't been paying too much attention to the nature itself. And just as I was about to call out for Leah again, I saw her shape bolting towards me again, with her tongue out. And she was dirty again. I just turned around and beckoned for her to follow. We were going to head home and I couldn't stay here any longer. Something felt really off about the forest today. And the walk back took around an hour. I hadn't realised we'd gotten that far from home. And time flies fast when you spend it inside of your head, thinking of your dead cousin and the happy memories you share together. And Leah behaved during the walk back and didn't run off again, which saved me some trouble. I hosed her down when we got back to the house. I felt more comfortable now that I was finally home but my gut feeling was still screaming at me that something was wrong. Had I missed something? And I filled the dog bowl for Leah to eat dinner, and then decided to lie down for a nap upstairs. I had a terrible headache. And I woke up some time later to a phone call from Mum. Well, it was dark out now and raining. They had just gotten to my cousin's house and were ready to head to bed. We talked for a little bit and I felt better 
after seeing them both. And after some time, we ended the call and I looked around my room, noticing Leah wasn't here. She usually made her way upstairs and slept at the foot of my bed if I was sleeping. I got up from bed and walked downstairs to see if I could find her. I could hear the rain pouring outside and some very distant thunder. Leah hated thunder. She might have been hiding under the dining table. I checked under it, but she wasn't there. I also checked over a dozen other places, and I couldn't find her. Leah? I yelled into the empty house. My heart was churning even worse than in the forest now. Something was terribly wrong. And just as I was about to yell again, I heard her footsteps behind me. I turned around and took a sigh of relief. She was right here. She came out of the direction of the living room. Why, she looked all right. I kneeled beside her and gave her some pets. <laughs> Good girl. And as I was doing so, my ears pricked up on a strange sound. I could hear scratching somewhere. I listened in. It was hard to discern through the pouring rain and thunder. It sounded like it was coming from the kitchen. I stood up and began walking there. Leo followed behind me. Something was off. In the kitchen, the scratching got louder. It sounded like it was coming from outside. I had closed all the blinds earlier on, all the windows and the back door, so I couldn't see outside. I slowly tiptoed to the back door, making sure to be silent as not to be heard, and I parted the blinds to look outside. My heart dropped. Leah was outside, scratching her door and asking to be let in. But Leah was right here. I turned around and looked at my dog. and She was standing in the doorway, looking at me funny. If Leah is inside, then what's out there, scratching at the door? The dog outside howled, making me flinch. It sounded like Leah. I kept staring at Leah in the doorway, while listening to the Leah outside. And something finally clicked in my mind. Something was... was wrong with her. She looked like Leah, but she also didn't. The proportions, they were all wrong. Her posture was unnatural. Her slightly tilted head. The way that she was looking at me, it... It wasn't Leah. The Leah outside started barking. And my mind was running a thousand miles a minute. Was this Leah, or was the one outside Leah? More importantly, what was it that was imitating her? The Leah in the doorway finally moved, and she began walking towards me. It looked so... so wrong. That's not how Leah walked. I turned around and started fumbling with the key to unlock the back door. And the footsteps kept getting closer and closer. They started sounding heavier and heavier. I finally managed to unlock the door and Leah bolted inside, going straight for the other one. Except it didn't look like Leah anymore. It had doubled in size. Instead of paws, it had hooves. Instead of ears, it had horns. And while still wearing Leah's hide and head. Nothing could have prepared me for that sight. And my fly tail fight instincts kicked in and I ran past them both. And Leah was barking at the monstrosity. I bolted upstairs and inside of my room. I locked the door behind me. My heart was beating out of my chest. I could hear the growling and barking downstairs. They were still having a showdown. Leah and whatever it was. Eventually, it grew silent. All I could hear was the rain and occasional thunder outside. Then I heard a faint sound. I wasn't sure what it was at first, but then it clicked. Something was scratching at my door. I couldn't be sure if it was Leah or not, so I kept the door closed and stayed quiet. Eventually, the scratching grew silent. I haven't left my room yet, and it's morning now. I called my parents, and they told me that I was being paranoid. I called the cops, and they thought that it was a prank call. I don't feel safe, but I have to check the house. I'll be going into my parents' room and grabbing their gun before I clear the house and make sure it's gone.
Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Certainly another one. Wow. Absolutely chilling, spine-tingling story there. And from the incredible mind of Corey Herrett. From over on Reddit. No sleep. Big thank you, Corey, for allowing me to narrate your story on the show. I really do hope you enjoyed my rendition. And look forward to more of your work in the future. Well, guys and girls, as ever, you know the drill. Please do let us know what you thought down below in the comments box. Please do like and share. Oh, it really does help with the channel and the community further. And one at hashtag Team Fear and DMT's Cryptid Crew. Now, of course, if you have a story to share on the channel, then please do get in touch with me at the contact email, which is as on screen. Contact the dead one at gmail.com. I really look forward to hearing from you. As ever, guys and girls, I hope your family and friends and yourselves are well and happy and looking forward to that beautiful warm summer sun. A big thank you as always for your kind likes, shares and comments and continued support of the channel. But above all, remember, be safe, not sorry.